Logan. Oh, fuck. I didn't even expect you to do that bit. Oh, no, uh, this is weird. I've got him. I've got him. Uh, so this week saw the re-release of Multiverses, which, if you're unaware, okay. is a fighting yeah. game with the widest, most eclectic collection of characters you've ever seen. It's basically Smash Brothers, but like made by Warner. Um, for example, it has LeBron James. It has from uh, from uh, from the Toon Squad specifically. From right? from life. Wait, yeah, I, I thought it was one. a I thought it was yeah, a, no. a Toon Squad <laughs> is, one. Yeah. Okay, and like Arya Stark. So, if there was one Counter Strike player in this fighting game, who would you choose? It's config, right? That's the only choice. You would go with <laughs> <laughs> See, I was thinking, I was thinking I would like art. I feel like art would be really fun because you'd just be like running around, you'd be really quick, you'd have a See, lot of combos. That sounds like a fun character to play, but like, yeah. if I'm going based on pure things we know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, you know, you could go with Blame F just because of his size. Um, but the fun thing about fighting games is like, you know, Princess Peach is in a fighting game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They don't actually have to be fighters. It's just like That's a good be, point. Who would be fun to play? That is a good point. Um so you could play um I Doja. Dozier. Dozier. And, like his, and he, he has basically like a grenade that he throws with his special. Yeah, he basically plays like Gragas from League of Legends, but in a two D side gotcha. scrolling. <laughs> fighting game i was thinking like a uh, kind of like solid snake right in, in smash bros where he has the grenade that he throws at people yeah but just think if you reskinned gragas from league and used it the explosive cask as a nade yeah i'm in could be it could be interesting yeah i like it maybe nico and he has like a gun that he, he like pulls out a deagle and shoots people that'd be kind of fun i i think and he the... get like gets damaged up if you aim at the head that'd be cool i think the idea of donk is really funny because Donk's is like real short thin dude he just screams at people yeah i think that would be interesting um i don't know there's plenty of good like just random pros um that like we could say here. yeah like magix does his like chair kick as one of his like forty. you know the, the video of magix kicking a chair over he just does that to people knocks them over you could do um the the dude that breaks his monitor not device the 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 gif oh um <laughs> yeah i know who you mean yeah, yeah. His name. T- is it tense i don't know i think but, it's tense but that like, dude ironically enough <laughs> you just do that dude yeah I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of scope for this and uh, we could, multiverses. If you're listening, could get Mo. Maybe an idea. Mo, Mo, like which Mo? I presumably li- like li- liquid uh, Mo. Yeah, well, yeah liquid, li- liquid Mo. <laughs> yeah, there's the picture of him in a liquid show. Yeah, but I mean. yet having him yell chicken fucking coop. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Yeah, and he, like the, he could have like a little chicken. So he pulls out and throws at people. Could you have the I by power team? As like a Pokemon trainer esque, that'd they, be kind of funny. Yeah, like and they bring met... out Steel or Dazed or, yeah. or Brax. Yeah, that'd be fun. I like that. <laughs> they, they just switch between. Yeah, they switch between and, them. And if you uh, if you lose a life first, you gain like extra damage or something. Yeah, like if you lose a stock first, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of scope. Hunden, just <laughs> Hunden would be funny. Hunden would be funny. All right, let's uh let's talk about proper Counter Strike now. Uh, one event's going on. Actually, I two, we were. two. Okay, that's a good one. Two events are going on right now. One hasn't started yet, I don't think, but it will start. Yeah, it hasn't started yet. It starts <laughs> starts on Friday. It will start. It starts on Friday. We're good. Everything's fine. I know how to prepare for this podcast. Um, we're going to start with IEM Dallas as the big event that's going on right now. Yep. Um, and then we'll get to talk to impact. Uh, talk about impact for a couple minutes later. Yep. So Dallas has started. A lot of matches have gone through already. We're on day three, day two, day two, right? Day three. This is day three. This is recording. day three as recording. But it hasn't yet started. Tom. It hasn't started. That's what. That's where I was getting tripped up because I know I've watched two days of Dallas. Yeah. Um, I I think let's just start group by group because. This A group has been a little fucked <laughs> from the start. The whole event's been a bit odd. 
that so like, let, weirdly strange. let's start with a reminder to everyone that there are two teams here with visa problems <clears throat> that would yep. be g2 with hooksy who they got G- that wasn't a visa issue okay that wasn't a visa issue. sorry with stand-ins i guess let's yep. go overarching uh with g stew taking the place of hooksy um and then the team with actual visa problems is heroic who have Nico Daz, who was just removed for Degster, playing for Degster, who just replaced Nico Daz. Because, of yeah. course, I love that. Yeah. It's it, it kind of funny, like, yeah, we're kicking you for Degster. Also, can you do us a favor? Can you do us a favor and just play this one event because Degster can't yeah. come to this event? I think, I mean, in a way, like, it's a good, like, for him, he has real motivation. Like, I can get a new team if I play well here. Yeah. I think, um, I think those are the only two uh stand-ins but it's more stand-ins than we normally have because america yeah uh if you're curious to know about american visas for sports players uh moist critical has a great video about how he had to let his entire apex legends team go for them to get in the u.s so they could play the tournament u.s immigration law is the worst i think he re-signed them after i think he did i think he literally let them go to play the one event in the u.s and then he re-signed them yeah. after the, it was a whole thing. I, I did watch. The, I actually watched the Apex event because I got some friends who were into Apex. But yeah, that that that's why we have visa issues here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start with Group B because I feel like Group B was the less fucked group. Um, <laughs> <laughs> opening round matches: Phase versus M80. Opening all the opening round matches were best of ones. We then did best of threes from that point. Uh, so phased beat M80. Um, yeah, this felt like. So I watched this. I watched most of the games in Dallas. Okay, which is an improvement over some of the games, uh, as per we normally do. <laughs> I watched most of the games because timing's great for me. Um, Phase looked like they actually knew how to win an opening round in an event, which they did, which is weird for Phase. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Like phase, it's really, it's always really hard to place phase. Like we know that they're probably a top five team most of the time, but sometimes you really start to doubt that. This event, they've looked very solid. Like they've not really had any. There's no no big concerns with this team. Carrigan's got them in fit and firing shape. Um, they're gonna make playoffs. They're probably gonna finish top four. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> as for M80. It just seemed like there was no one there. Like their best performer in the match and actually in the event overall was Sin, but nobody yeah, cracked. No one cracked a one zero this event for yeah, M80. Not a good time. Malbs was absent. It felt like. I um, think that's that's kind of the issue with M80, right? Is that if Malbs isn't firing on all cylinders, they cannot compete against a team like Phase. And I mean that's like to be expected. Like, yeah you don't expect this team without their best player going crazy to beat phase or even compete against phase so. it also though to me it feels that if malbs isn't doing his 1.35 or whatever it was at pro league bullshit that it feels yeah. like one of wreck or swisher or even sin should be stepping up and kind of yeah, filling but... the spot to a degree or filling it with but like are you really expecting the second or third best player on M80 to go crazy against no, I, Heroic? Like I'm not, but I expect someone to get a 1-0 in a tournament. Yeah, on their team. I mean, they, they, but but they played again. They played Phase and Heroic. Like these are good teams. I mean, M80 are, are a good team. Like they're probably a probably top twenty, but there are a lot of players who could play Phase and Heroic. Yeah, o- only three maps as well, and and not have a one point oh. Like a, a lot, it will happen to a lot of players. Everyone gets dicked by phase from time to time. Everyone's lost to heroic at some point. Like these are good teams. I'm not too worried about M80 because this it, this isn't the caliber of teams they're expected to be beating yet. I mean, they they're they good, have potential but... to be a good to be a really good team, but phase and heroic are. Are like you know a step above what they're used to. 
a step above M80, and especially when Maubs isn't at the peak of his performance. It's like, again, Rec is a really good player, but he's the second best player on M80, or third best player, depending on how highly you rate Swisher. Yeah. I, I think Rec's actually been kind of a revelation on this team. Mm-hmm. Um, you you don't expect him to be out shooting rocks. You don't expect him to be out shooting frozen. It's it's fine. It's okay. I find it I find the, the general conversation about this team very interesting because um I guess a year ago when Liquid stopped being OC, Elige, NAF, Nitro, I, at the time you Kindar, right? When they stopped being this like very North America centric team and they switched to the weird Europe team, and then they switched to this team. Um, There was talk that they were saying, oh, OC is going, and Nitro is going, we're going to bring in Swisher. And there was this, like, conversation point at that point that, like, oh, Swisher is, like, the next guy up in NA. And it feels like ever since he joined M80 that we've kind of soured on Swisher to a degree. Um, So I I know, or I'm... 99% 99% sure Complexity were going to sign Swisher. You Before uh, Elise, yeah. I think we've talked before, about And this. then Elise came, yeah. Yeah. Like I, you know, somebody told me that. I'm like, I have no reason to not believe it. I vaguely think um, Swisher told us that. <laughs> I think he didn't deny it, yeah. <laughs> um, but I but I think this is a team is actually... I've always thought Swisher was good, but not the guy. Like, he's not... He's reliable. He's very solid, um, but he's not like a superstar rifler, at least for the tier that M80 Liquid Complexity want to be. Um, but as a second or third piece, it's just, he's very reliable. He reminds me of like um, like Magics on Spirit, or yeah. um, like somebody who you just sort of he just gets the kills he's supposed to get. He's rarely like dropping thirty, but he's also rarely dropping dropping like six or seven. He feels kills. like a magisk esque player. Yeah, in like that he, way. he can kind of do a bit of everything. I I would say a he twist esque player, to. but we'll, we'll yeah yeah. We're, I mean, twist <laughs> twist is a fucking like we'll, twist we, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna spend like five minutes on twist. In, twist when is we get unbelievably to good at Counter Strike. We're gonna, we're um, gonna spend a lot of more time when we get to Group A. Because... We, I mean, we've done this, but I remember with Launders, we talked about how good Twist was. Yeah, so it was just. All right, I'm I mean, moving on he, from this. Unless you have another yeah. bit on M80, Swisher is very good, but he, as like this team is well built because Swisher is the second or third star. Yeah, um, that's kind of why I'm quite high on M80. Is they have this? They actually have a rifle depth that most American teams can only dream of. Yeah. Um. So as you alluded to, Virtus Pro beat Heroic in their opener. Heroic and MAD then played in the lower bracket, and Heroic smashed the no shit idea out. How good Virtus Pro? Are. Absolutely I never none. do. I like are Virtus Pro the sixth best team in the world, or like the twenty fifth? I literally know it I. changes on a daily basis. I it like... does. It, it, like they smacked Heroic, took a map off phase, and they play big today. Do you have any faith they're going to be big? <laughs> no, zero. None. Absolutely <laughs> like, none. <clears throat> as good as they've been, and as good as Electronic has been, which is like really gives an extra dimension to this team, um, you still just kind of think they might shit the bed against big. Mm-hmm. So I've got no idea. But weirdly, if they came up against Na'Vi or Heroic in the next game, you kind of think they'd win it? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know how good... Versus Pro, their ceiling is so high mm-hmm. because I, I think Maui Snake has been calling them a super team, like a Russian super team. Yeah, which sounds weird because they don't have any of like the three or four best players. In no, Russia. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's kind of fair because they've probably got like the fifth to tenth best players in Russia. Yeah, and most of the best players in Russia are authors, and you can only have one author, so. They they don't have Monacy or Dong, um, or Chopper. They don't have like, the best the, oh, Chopper, the best player Shira. in Russia. Or <laughs> Chopper. I mean, Chopper versus James for in-game leading. I mean, I kind of like both. I I think James is very underrated actually as a leader. Um, so like this team has incredible like the, the technical ability of this team is insanely high, and when their um, system is on point they look nearly unbeatable but the problem is that it requires um 
a level of precision that is very hard to consistently reach for this to be unbeatable. It, it somewhat reminds me of North, where like when North system worked, they could beat the best teams. We saw a Dreamhack Stockholm that the system yeah. worked for an event. They were the best for team one the event <laughs> for one event, and then they went out of the major and like the, they didn't even qualify for the major in the next event. So, Verse Pro is kind of similar, but with a little bit. It's it's like an evolved version of that, where it's even more pragmatic. Um, so it's it's harder to disrupt, but it requires a ridiculous level of precision that you just cannot be consistent on. There is no other Counter Strike podcast in which you would get Virtus Pro compared to 2018 2019 North. That's because I'm the only person who talks about <laughs> North anymore. Because I watch more of them than I, I would. I would wager, other than people who work for North, I probably watch more of North than anyone else. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't fight you on that. <laughs> Yeah. uh so maybe, Vir- maybe there's a caster out there who beats me <laughs> so virtus pro beat her oak in the opener they lost to phase in the upper semis which continues our i don't know how good virtus pro is um and they play big today um as you watch this or listen to this podcast they have either beaten or lost too big yeah they've probably too owed big and i look really silly for saying i had no faith in them being them <laughs> or they'll get owed to by big um and i'll still look <laughs> silly for saying they were, yep. re- they were actually a good team so um, I'm going to look like an idiot regardless. Spirit against FlyQuest. Um, this was a 13-1 absolute stomp. Um, yeah, I mean. It was bad. Yeah. Um, I do want to point one thing out here about FlyQuest, and this will probably be the only thing I point about FlyQuest, um, is FlyQuest started a thing called Project Koalification, which is for every pistol round win in their games or every ace, I think it is, they adopt a koala. And, okay, if you're new to FlyQuest, they've been doing this in League of Legends for a while, of the, like trying they to plant do... Plant um, trees. Yeah, stuff, plant right. trees for wins. And I think at Fly... At, at um, MSI... Yeah, they, notice they didn't do wins in Counter-Strike. No. Um, I think at MSI they did... um. For every soul, every dragon soul, depending on what the dragon soul was, they donate to a different charity. So big thumbs up to FlyQuest. Yeah, I mean, uh, koalas are cute, but they feel like they're kind of vicious. They're kind of, <laughs> kind of dangerous. Creatures. It's an you know Australian I mean? team. What were we gonna do? Yeah. Project Kangaroo, and that how... well, kangaroos, are, kangaroos are terrifier. I don't want to okay. get like. But how are you? This. Have you ever seen like a kangaroo's like? <laughs> muscles they're in yes these things are crazy but how else were you gonna get a very cute name like project koalification um i'll come up with something give me a <laughs> okay. second you can move on I'll spirit t- I'll beat the shit out of fly quest this is expected this is a expected result yeah as much. good as 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 interesting as fly quest was to watch in pro league they're still not beating spirit no, like, nobody beats Spirit. Well, obviously they do. Obviously, like, people do beat Spirit. Group, group state, like the first two games. You know, you're saying like Faze sometimes will just lose their opening game. I yeah. don't think Spirit ever lose their opening game. I don't think they ever like give up more than four rounds in their opening game either. Yeah, they gave up one. Um, and then the <laughs> yeah, literally <laughs> the last opening round game was Navi against Big. Um, this was an interesting game. So we saw this new look Big. Um, because this is the first time I think we've really seen them in an international event since they made some moves and brought Searson back and brought JDC in. Um, and between this game and the lower bracket game, I can tell you that this game will live this team will live or die on how well JDC does in a given match. I kinda like JDC. He seems to play the game on a knife edge. Like he's <laughs> either brilliant or looks terrible. And I just really respect that. He just I also he, he's completely selfless, but I also would be remiss to not note that Searson is back and looks fucking great. <laughs> like Searson actually kind of goes under the radar for like how good he actually is at the game. Yeah, there, there aren't many orpers better than Searson, certainly mechanically, but also like over that period of a big before he he like, I think he benched himself or he got benched, whatever. Like his ratings are really good, and when uh, yeah. like. like Yes, he has his issues. Like he doesn't use he doesn't use rifles, which is something I intensely intensely respect. Like he had more kills with like 
the scout than both M4s combined. Over, yeah, I think he. I think it's like next one after that was like the Glock or something like that. It was like he uses yeah. scoped weapon and that's it. Yeah, and I'm like, I I really respect that. Um, he's real good with them. Good, yeah, whether or not it's a good idea, I'm not. I'm not willing to. You know, I'd need to watch a lot more demos and like actually run some numbers on it to know. And I'm not going to do that. I'm no. just going to say I respect it. And I and Sisson puts up numbers like pretty regularly. He he does. His problem is when he's bad, he's really bad. Someone please run the numbers and tweet it at us. So yeah. When we will shout you out in the next podcast yeah. to like, talk about. Sears is buying the scout actually a good idea for Sisson? I would wager it probably is. The money you save buying scouts over M4, the M4 is fucking dog shit. That's not. That's... <laughs> I've had enough of the M4. I hit a guy for 56 in 9 with it yesterday. I'm not happy. I played a um, game of Vertigo last night, and I think I got four different 98 and 4s. And yeah. I... It's a miserable <laughs> weapon to use. If I just had the scout, I could wall bang headshot this guy's flash, and it would be fine. Alright. Um, Let me... Let, let's finish off Group B. It's gotta be good. Um, Spirit beat Navi 2-0. Um, this... Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so today, so, as... <laughs> Go, go, go. I was thinking of uh, writing a video for us. I don't know if we're going to do it yet, but it was going to be called Does Winning the Major Make You Worse? That's my take on Navi. Winning the Major, I think, just makes you worse at the game. I'm trying to think. Okay, so the last bunch of Major winners, they were Navi. all kind of worse after. Navi. Navi with JL as MVP. Yeah. Um, Vitality was kind of worse after, but we can also push that up to cs2 yeah, and they cut dupree yeah uh who won the major and beef Majesk. for outsiders i they definitely got worse they're better again but they definitely got worse yeah. for a while yep I no there was the there was a major in between yeah. i think it was flip but there was a major in between was there not rio was the end of 22. hold on i'm i'm i'm, paris I'm looking 20, no paris was early 23 i'm looking okay um yeah, so phase was phase was in Antwerp. I don't yeah. know. Can we count that phase got? I don't think phase got worse or better, but phase, phase is probably no, no. Phase were fine, like but phase... phase is so fluctuating at any moment. Yeah, that it kind of doesn't matter. Navi won the major and immediately capitulated for yep. other reasons, but I think the know. first team that you can say really wasn't worse after the major is the Astralis majors. Yeah, but like Astralis, obviously, but Astralis like. Are you familiar with the the messy top right effect? No. Where any any chart you make in football, any statistical chart you make, you can find Lionel Messi by looking in the top right. Um, okay, yeah, I I get that. <laughs> so, any like statistical trend you find, you will find Australis, and like they won't follow it because they were the best. Like they yeah. won four majors, and like they won four majors. I mean, you keep going down won. this list, like. Cloud9. Kirby was major MVP. His career went downhill. Cloud9. Tarek basically retired and became a Valorant player. Gambit. Team just... Gambit immediately <laughs> disbanded. I, the only one you can really say after Astralis is the Luminosity gaming that turned into SK gaming because they ran yeah. the world for a year and a half. Yeah. Everyone before... And obviously and... there's there's some little bits like that. Obviously winning the major doesn't make you worse. No. But... The the sort of pressure of the major seems to lead to the team who isn't there's, necessarily the best winning, which is kind of interesting. There's kind of some amount of arms race after the major too, and I feel like the major winning team never takes part in said arms race except Vitality. Except Vitality, um, and they ne and except Vitality and post uh, E League Atlanta Astralis. Yeah, because of the Kirby to Majisk move which yeah. they eventually got better from but in the short term probably was not better but it, but kierby got worse kierby definitely got worse all right let's finish this out um phase beat virtus pro in the upper semis spirit beat navi in the lower semis today's matches as recording phase spirit take them take place in the upper finals i have no fucking clue who's going to win this match um <laughs> spirit I, if it was in an arena, I'd, I might change my spiral win. Okay. Uh, lower semis today are Navi Heroic. I would like to say Navi, but it could be Heroic really easily. Who knows? Uh, depends which JL turns up. He's not been great since the major. Which and is what prompted this discussion? The final lower semi is Virtus Pro against Big. 
we've talked about this like it should, like, be, it's it should be very pro um lower final will also take place today that will be the winner of navi heroic against the winner of virtus pro big and the winners of the phase spirit already confirmed into playoffs and the winner of the lower final goes into playoffs now let's talk about group a because this is all over the fucking place <laughs> um yeah opener one vitality monty went to overtime Vitality I mean, yeah, win. Like, Monty is still kind of scary. It's a best of one, like it happens. It's also a new fragging is, is kind of nice. It's new Monty, which there's zero. I I don't even know how yeah, you think like, about new Monty yet. I, I'm always terrified. Like if I was a player and I was the saw Monty in the opening round, I'd be like, "Fuck this!" Like I don't I don't want to play against Monty. You got no yeah. idea what you're gonna get from them. They've always got tricks up their sleeve, and they're mechanically good enough to pull it off. All right, let's talk about the first big disappointment of this event. G2 with Stewie 2K beat Falcons. <laughs> Which one are you disappointed by? G2 winning? Because I am. I'm disappointed by Falcons. Actually, I i don't know what I'm disappointed in. This is great for yeah, all event, like... for all parts. The Stewie propaganda gets to continue. The Falcons <laughs> downfall <laughs> continues. Like, well, how dog shit are Falcons, man? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, there's no, I, I know we've got. I've fucking talked endlessly about like the problems with the fact that they don't have a star player. They need um, a star player. Like you know, I mean that is really the main one. There's not really <laughs> any others. Like that is they just don't have. A we star we player. have They're all over the age of like twenty five. We Fun. could make a super cut over the last six months of us talking about uh, Falcons problems, and it would probably be a four hour long video. Yeah. I wrote a video for ESL about Falcons problems and I basically said the same thing. And then at the end I said, well, even if you, even if all of that is true, there is no way a team with Majisk, Dupree, Sun Pius, Madden and Snappy should be this bad. And like, coached by Zonic. Like, it's got Dupree and fucking Majisk on it. Like, yeah, you don't have a star player, but like you could do pre, you can't be this bad. Like, Okay, and I understand it's a best of one against G2, arguably have the best player in the world, whatever. They also have Stewie 2K. They also have, like, so, they've not been good since Nexus rejoined. Although I will say he's actually been, from what, like, from the games I've watched, Nexus has actually been quite good. He's been fine. He has been, he's been, he's been very good. He has him. been exactly what the team needed to replace JKS. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like if you were moving like on, on next to he was good. Like, if you were moving on from JKS because of attitude or behavioral, I, I let's be clear, we don't have any knowledge of why they removed JKS. I think it's the thing I'm about it's, to say, it which was, is it was comms. I, I or or a money thing, right? That JKS wanted too much I, money. It was it was comms. I'm, I'm almost certain. Okay, so regardless of They're what it was, comms. right? Nexa fits right into that role and has been doing a great job in the role. Like, like, like at this event, what what I've watched of Nexa, he's been pretty solid. Like you actually, when G two are losing to me, it's not because of Nexa. It, I will bang this forever. I think the big problem with G two is Hunter. I think and you're I, probably I right. I don't know if that's you. Are, sorry, I said I think you're probably right. Yeah, I. I Maybe it's an unpopular opinion. Maybe it's a popular. I, I don't actually know what the sort of general consensus is. Hunter's not been good recently, and he, like when they removed JKS, they said it was to give Hunter more space, and Hunter hasn't done a lot with this extra space he's been given. And I, I think it's, I think it's quite cheap to go for Nexa because he replaced JKS when, okay, Nexa has not been brilliant, and there are times where you watch him, you're like, you're just significantly mechanically worse than JKS. Mm -hmm. I I don't think many... I don't even think Nexa would really disagree with you. Um, but I also don't think he's the main reason they lose when they do. Yeah. And again, when I've watched at this event, like, he's won them rounds on it. There was a round on, like, Anubis where he was trapped in the open on an A split and he just, like, killed three people and won the round. I'm like, that's exactly what you want out of your big site anchor. Mm -hmm. but it was really good. Like, that... that He's done nothing wrong. He he's won them around on his own, and then you watch like Hunter not do the same in roles where he's supposed to. And I'm like, you may there how may is this the issue? Uh, there may be some insanity in this, but I actually think Stewie being the standard. Now we we've there was an article that came out that basically Nico had said they didn't pick Stewie, 
management just said, here's your stand in for Hooksie for Dallas. And it was Stewie. Okay. Which I love as an idea, but I actually think Stewie is kind of helping this team a little bit because the guy still plays as if he is a 21 year old smoke pug player. Have you, did you watch that bit in the game where they cut to the comms mid, like the end yeah. of the round? Where Shui was telling Nico, what are you doing? And Nico just like snaps back at him. I was like, mm, these two do not like each other. No, but the, <laughs> that's what it felt like to me. But the, the fact that they can use Stewie right now as a hard entry and a, like one of those players who will just double heat, like an art style player. Yeah feels really good for G2 because yeah. it means you're not putting Nico Hunter Monazi in first who are not the Hoopsie players. Does, Hoopsie does that and everyone gets angry at him. So I don't know. I, I can't explain. I cannot explain my reasoning. I think there's, pro- there's, of, there's definitely less pressure on fault, Stewie he's... here because yeah. he's not Hoopsie, right? And there's no like s- switching it there. Do you think Shibi 2K has been significantly better than Hooks has been? No, I think he's been about the same. The the thing I think they ratings, it's kind of the thing I think they lose the it. most in this is that Nico has to IGL. Mm. But what well, Stewie could IGL? St- <laughs> I'm serious. Like, if you're gonna have Nico IGL. I event, you might as well have Stewie. Yeah, I don't think that G two has looked considerably worse with Stewie instead of Nexa uh, instead of Foxy. No, but I also think that's um kind of the point where people talk about cutting Hooksy. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, does cutting Hooksy and putting somebody else in first? No, uh, like does that's does that make the rest of the team better? You I and know. I have had this discussion a million times. Changing your fifth best player does not make you better as a team. Most of the most time. of the time, there, there, there are hey, there time. are times if when you, that player's Buster, like yeah, change them because he's fucking. Terrible. But it, if you if you change Stewie to like Majisk or something like that, yeah, that makes you a better team. But if you're changing yeah, yeah. if you're changing Hooksy to Stewie, if you're changing, um, I, I don't know, I can't think of any more right now. But if you your fifth best player, if you're changing to another who's going to be your fifth best player, it doesn't make your team better. No, so. Most right. of the time it doesn't. And I, I think Hooksy gets a bad rap because people expect this team to be better when the reason it's not better is because Hunter doesn't do enough with the resources he's given. Yep. In my personal opinion. I, I'm I'm in agreement here. All right. So uh, G2 then played Vitality in the upper semis. Vitality took the win at 2-0. Um, Monacy just kind of wasn't there for that game as much as he normally is. He was still good. Let's make that clear. Yeah. But he wasn't at the superstar inhuman levels that he normally is, in which what it feels like right now, G2 needs to win. Yeah. Even with their standard lineup and stuff, it feels like you need Monazi to be posting a 1.45 or higher yeah. for them to win Even again. That's not always enough. Yeah. On the other side of Group A. Yeah. Mao's yeah. 9Z or 9Z. Best of one, 9Z win. 9Z just do this sometimes. I don't know how. They just have the, they, they have this ability to do this. I don't now, know where it comes from. I need to remind everyone what this 9Z team is. Because... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, like a... it's Max, DJT, Buddha, Martinez. Yes, the Martinez from Movistar Riders. And Huauso Peak. Yeah, great name. Excellent name. <laughs> All in caps as well, so you know. Like, so you, you know. know when you've been peaked. He's shouting it at you. But it's a Spanish-speaking mixed team from South America, except for Martinez, who's from Spain. Like yeah. Chile, Uruguay, Argentina, Spain. And they look good. Yeah, I mean, they. so their core has been together a long, long time. Max and DJT have played together for years. Yep. Um, Buddha's been... I think he's been on this team for a little while. Uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong. I think he, he's been on a couple of other Argentinian teams. Martinez uh, is quite a recent addition. Huazo Peak's been there for, I think, a year or two. Um, but like Max and DJT have played together for years, and they know how each other play. 
and they're both really good. Like, I, 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 I do sort of think these sort of players almost get lost a little bit because they they stick to their own insular scene. Um, I don't know how good their English is, for example. I, I'm pretty sure they don't speak very good English. They're on a full Spanish-speaking team. They have been for a while. And, and they have been for years, right? Yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure I've not seen any interviews with them. I think when I worked an event where I needed to like get interviews with players, I'm pretty sure Buddha did a lot of their talking. And he did a lot of talking for the other Argentinian team as well. Like I, I think they don't speak very good English. They They kind of just limit themselves to their own scene. And then occasionally just get invites to these events. And you, like you can watch Max and DJT. They're very good players. This is this is what I think the 2025 season with the end of franchising is going to help out with. Is we'll... Maybe, but they don't seem consistent at it either. So. No, but I think you get more reps and you kind of become more consistent. Um, Hopefully. You'd hope. The other match opening round was Complexity versus Liquid, which Liquid took yeah. the win kind of decisively they mm-hmm. seem to kind of thinking found their form um yeah 9z played liquid in a best of three 9z took the win um this was all over the place yeah liquid this is the, this is not the match the we need to talk about though <laughs> yeah for, for all of the things liquid do well they do just have a rick in them yeah. they have a, a choke in them. they have a bad game in them they are wildly inconsistent and um it's not a good sign that they managed to lose with your kinder going positive correct let's talk about the lower bracket because that's the interesting bit in this group so mao has played complexity and beat complexity means complexity is out m80 is yep. also out meaning the last american team and if you're on spotify and not watching i've done air quotes um, you could hear the echo. Is liquid. Um, G2. Uh, yeah, you know what? G2. Well, only one will make it. We'll talk about it yes. in a minute. So complex- but, uh, Liquid don't have any Americans. No, they have, they have North Americans. They have Canadians. Yeah, yeah. But they don't have any, any, any Americans. Americans. Yes. Um, Falcons beat Monty. So that leads us into a G2 mouse game where G2 won. Yeah. Which is... By the way, weird, wild, yeah, wild. I would say, like, Mouse have won two events back to back. I understand this is a bigger event, but there was there, we've seen nothing from Mouse in the last year that would suggest they would lose to a Mouse to G two with a stand in in a group stage. Yep. And then the other lower semi final was the Liquid Falcons game, which I will be dubbing the Twists game. <laughs> yeah. Um. Crazy. So. The first map was Nuke. Falcons win on Nuke. The second map was Ancient. Twist had 30 kills before the end of the first half. Yeah. <laughs> Twist is really, really good. <laughs> struck, dude. I don't know what you... Like, he's always been good. He'll always be good. You can do anything. They then play Anubis, and Yukindar had, had one of his games that he has been able yeah. to p- start to pull out every once in a while. But that Ancient was a... And I truly mean this, a work of art from Twists. They yeah, he didn't have I don't think he had 30 kills at half. I've just checked. He had a lot of kills. He had, he had 20, 21 on the T side. 21 on T side and 15 on CT. Then they almost threw the map. They're still obscene. They almost way. threw the map. 21 and 6 on the T side is fucking ridiculous. And the insane thing is when they started when Liquid started playing CT, they had Twists play Donut. And they four stacked B. And it was just Twist's job to watch a mid and A site. And the guy fucking did it. Yeah, I mean, Donut is one of those spots that good players make look ridiculously overpowered. And when I play there, I get pre far one tap. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So today's matches 9Z play Vitality in the upper finals, and G2 play Liquid for a spot in playoffs. All right, uh, two roster moves that have happened, and then we'll talk about impact for a couple minutes here. Um, but before we do that, do you know how the pros make aiming look easy? Let's introduce you to crosshair placement, a technique that makes clicking heads look effortless. We broke down, and by we, I mean Simba, 
who we'll introduce to you in a second, uh, broke down one of Nico's most iconic rounds to show you exactly why pros make hitting clean headshots look effortless. Comes down to one thing that you can train right now. You can join the boot camp. We have a TLDR boot camp. It's six lessons. You get them in six days. You learn stuff. It's written by Ty, who has been a North American ESEA player for a trillion years. Um, and has played. He's better than you. He's probably. better than both of us. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I mean you as in the yes. list. He's probably better. He's than definitely you. better than he's you. Very, very good. He's boy. really good. Uh, you can join bootcamp at learncs.gg for tons of clips and screenshots that will show you how to master crosshair placement. That and five other lessons, all for free, that will help you elevate your game and help you climb the ladder. You can join for free again at learncs.gg. Yeah, I know uh, Ty's been working on it for, I think, like two years now. It's like a year. Um, we, I think the plan was do yeah, it in 60 time. days, and then it turned into a year. Yeah, it, like it took a long time, but he he like, he like knows his shit. Yeah. Like, he knows what he's talking about. And every lesson is like a bunch of words, and then there is pictures, GIFs, videos on showing you exactly what he means with those words. Yeah. So you will you will understand the whole thing. I have read through it. I got better. Our social media manager, Ben read through it and like jumped three face levels or some shit like it is legitimately good go do it link will be in the description of youtube and in the spotify notes yeah okay two uh roster moves the first ents has made their first move in the uh in the polish era they have now uh, removed hades and diha which we'll yeah. come back to in a second and added some die young and Pody. Pody is from their academy team. Um, Hades and Diha. You and I have talked for a little bit about how Diha is all over the place at any given moment. I'd be willing to bet that that's uh, roughly the reasoning why the Diha thing happened. Yeah, it's um, it's weird. Diha has kind of been a. He's a player who ne who had a potential but never really did anything until Snappy got his hands on him and Snappy turned him into like kind of a force of nature where he Diha won duels he just had no right to win um, like all the time mm -hmm. uh, and it, you, part of you thinks like why are you taking duels the other one is like well if you're gonna win them I guess it's fine and I think with under Glaive he's just regressed quite a bit <clears throat> uh, there's obviously a player there I find it quite interesting I pretty certain nine tried to sign diha when ents was falling apart and diha was like no nah, i don't want to join you then nine joined ents and now he's been kicked from that team i think it's quite quite amusing i so diha i kind of have an idea hades i've seen some reasonings um one of the things i had read and i have no source for this i don't i honestly don't remember where it came from was that hades move basically moved himself to the bench and is not getting benched because he is going to a new team okay so the the full circle thing i heard on this is that complexity have determined their hauser uh... I uh, what's going on with Hauser prior to Dallas and contracts were in the works. And that to me sounds like they are moving on from Opper. And in my head that says Hades just gets benched. I, I want, I have to wonder if Hades is going to complexity to replace Halzer. I think that makes a lot of sense. I do that too. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I like it for kind of all, for all parties, to be honest. Um, I, I, Hades is, very stable um he can be a star player but i think i don't think uh, you need him to Ents... be in that system yeah exactly i think they actually need a i remember somebody telling me i don't know if it was harry or or uh, sam animo said that like stylistically the best author like do you know who complexity to sign i went no he went brokey i was like yeah yeah it makes a lot of sense eight Passive, reliable Orpa who you can put in the late round. It's kind of what Hades is. Um, it's what Device used to be. He speaks very too. good English because I think he grew up in England, if I'm not mistaken. Hades is he's, he's, he's like, I'm pretty sure he's like grew up in England, so his English is flawless. Um, he's a good player with a 
pretty solid ceiling. Seems like a better fit than Halzerk in the server. Um, I think Halzerk was well liked outside the server. I mean, Halzerk um, was basically well American consistent. outside of the server. He looks very American. He is I the mean, most American. I think I wrote in the in the magazine like if you went for a drink with him, like halfway through the night, he would just like take his shirt off and yep. not even reference it. Like he just his shirt would just be off. You'd be fishing, like drinking beer out of an ice cooler, and he'd just take his shirt off. At some point, you'd be like, yeah, obviously. Um. So yeah, I, that makes sense to me in my head. Otherwise, I don't yeah. kind of really see why they do this as two and one. Right. Yeah. It, I, I, so the, the move here is Pody for Hades and some die young for Deha. And if you're going to bring yeah. in some die young to this team, I think you just bring in some die young on his own before you yeah. do a Hades move as well, if you were going to, but if you're doing it because Hades is leaving anyway, this all makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, complexity basically said there was a quote from the owner or the CEO, whoever it was on HFTV where it was just like, I think it was yeah, messy we're sorting also. out the, was it Messioso? I think it was Messioso. Uh, he just said, yeah, we're, we're sorting out the Orp situation. We hope to have news soon, which to me suggests they're getting rid of Halzerk. Yeah. Because it... if you were going to keep Halzerk, you'd be like, no, there's nothing. Like, there's nothing in these rumors. Yeah. We're keeping Halzerk. A decision has been just, made on. Deny it. A decision has been made on Halzerk's contract situation, and it doesn't depend on Dallas' performance. Hopefully, we will have news very soon about the future of the opposition on the team. We're very happy with what we're looking to build and what we're looking to do. Now, yeah. to be completely, if you'd fair, agreed to, if you'd made the decision to keep him, you just you wouldn't say, say it. you wouldn't say, "Oh, we hope to have news soon." You'd say, "Unless he's staying." Like, unless Messioso is a giant baiter and he's just fucking with all of us, which I could see maybe but but i the hades thing sounds right to me yeah um okay the other move that happened is definitely a different thing gob b has been removed as the head coach for big like a day before dallas <laughs> um there's a lot of teams that would like to have him i think yeah so easily go to a lower lower tier team and turn them into a good one i think yeah so gabby was as a player on big for two years and then as a coach on big for an additional two or three years i think he had a little weird valorant stint in there too yeah i think he did I think you're right. um but he's basically been associated with big since big existed <laughs> yeah pretty much um and he's he has been, regardless of what you think about him as a player and stuff, he is definitely a steadying voice behind players, um, regardless of how you think Big has like performed. Um, I think there there will definitely be a lot of like tier two European teams that are looking for him. I wouldn't be surprised if there were a bunch of tier one European teams that were looking at him as well. Yeah, I think so. I mean, everyone knows. I I think the thing with tier one is you know he has his own way of thinking, and you. You, if you're signing God B, you kind of want him to be like you want the, the system. Godfather, like yeah. you want, yeah, you want this. You want him to build. You're, you're not bringing him in as like a supplement to an in-game leader. You're build, bringing him in as like you teach them how to play. Unfortunately, Bad News Eagles is playing up. That would kind of be a good fit. Um, they, they they got removed from Guild and they're disbanding, from what I hear. Yep. Or from from like what they're saying. Um, so that's a shame. But like. I think there are a lot of teams that could do with some structure and you kind of bring like there's a lot of tier two, tier three teams. You bring in God B, I think you probably move up a tier. I, I actually think a really good fit for that could be like a static. Yeah. I or think gaming gladiators as they are now. Yeah, gaming glad well, or the new static roster. I think either or. Oh, I didn't I didn't even know they had a they new do. Roster, it's it is what it is. Do you know do you know what would be interesting? FlyQuest. I'd like to see Gobby on FlyQuest. So you you and I are thinking the same idea. Because I think it'd be interesting to see Gobby on the Mongols. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, that is interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> yeah. I like both these ideas. This is what I mean. Like, Gobby... I, like, you know, I, like, he's not... Maybe his time's run out on big, but... He's not going to go to Heroic or Liquid or Virtus Pro or Complexity. Like, he's not going to go to any of, like, the biggest... Furia. Furia. He's going to teach Furia how to play. I don't think anyone can teach Furia how to play. <laughs> no, I know. There's no way There's no way you'd have him and Fallen. There's too much, like, there's too much, like, respect going on there. The, the actual really interesting one in my head is M80. I thought about that, but I think Sin 
it's kind of sick of <laughs> being well, in town. I, I actually wonder how that works to a degree because Sin and Slacks both came from that German yeah. system that is the Gob B system to a degree. Yeah. So I wonder they if did, that. But I think is that Sin an advantage got, or got disadvantage? moved back to a player by Gob B and the, the big back tabs, and I think mm, yeah, maybe not. I think I they know. quite like Death as well. I think there's a lot. Of no, I, I think they do too. That, that this is not a this is not an indictment on any of the the coaches that no, we've no. just talked about. Just kind of in general, um, Gamer Legion would be another one. I wouldn't mess with Gamer Legion structure at all. <laughs> I wouldn't like Gamer Legion. Whatever they're doing, they know something I don't about Counter Strike. <laughs> I mean, obviously, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, the way they they constantly find players and find ways to still be good, even when seemingly downgrading, means their coaching staff. I wouldn't like. I wouldn't touch them if I'm a game Legion. Like their coaching staff, I think know what they're doing. All right, um, let's get to Impact. ESL Impact starts on Friday America time. Um, this is the season five finals. Teams that have been invited, uh, Imperial Valkyries, who we talked about before the show. Yes, yes before so, uh, the they, show. That was X Nigma Galaxy became Pigeons, and then like uh, a week ago, a few days ago, they signed with Imperial. Um, invariably the best team in the world, though there's probably some debate because but Navi Javelins have beaten them the last two times. But... They also don't have Vilga anymore. Yeah, who uh, I believe is on the desk. Yes, I believe that's true. They'd have Zaz instead, which is not a huge downgrade if a downgrade at all, but Zaz is obviously very famous in the in the women's scene. But um I mean Vilga's a five four time, five time impact winner. Well, considering this is season five, I don't think you can be a five time winner yet. Yeah, but I wondered if there was like uh <laughs> I don't know. I I feel like five times sounds right as all. Well. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's probably four time. Um FlyQuest Red will be there. Um, Navi Javelins will be there, as you just alluded to. Who, who are, it, like, there's a good HOTV article about um, Navi Javelins um, have stead like had a big jump and then have like steadily been improving since. They were about the fourth best team in the world, uh, at, like season oh, which one was in Katowice, and you could tell like mechanically they were very very good, but they just didn't really have the structure. They've um, figured some shit out clearly because they're now probably the best team in the world realistically they're very very good um tsm shimmer which is the former shimmer lineup from na uh fluxo demons big akipa which is the team that they built around juliano juliano i don't know yep. why I juliano there um yeah she was like uh is it spanish i think it's spanish j's or h's and yeah Mickey, but she's know. swedish yeah, you actually pronounce them but she yeah she's neither so um yeah. let her cook and HSG uh, female. Um, I have no clue who's going to win this tournament. Navi Javelins are probably favorites. Um, they're like they've beaten. Um, sorry, not Nigma. Uh, uh, Valkyries. Imperial. Yeah, Imperial. The last Valkyries. two times. Um, since Vilga's gone, they've not been quite as good. But also, Navi have been on a bit of a climb. So. I, every time we have one of these events, I always look at FlyQuest Red and go, damn, they could win something. And then they kind of fall apart partway through. Um, yeah, they just, from what I've seen of FlyQuest, they are mechanically just not as good as Navi Jones. Yep. There, there's, there's hope for me, as per there always is. And uh, I think this is the first time we've seen HSG on land in a very long time, um, which means we get to see the return of Olga. Yep. which is its own thing because she left that. It was the, the best player in the world for the first two seasons of Impact. Yeah, she Between left that. Her and Anna, and then Anna took left her. Yep, she, they they finished fifth, sixth to Enigma Galaxy in season four. So it'll be interesting. I think is uh, where we're at here. Um, yep, but pl- make sure to tune in. I think their finals happens just before finals on Sunday for Dallas. I th- think it's after but i can't remember i seem to remember it being really quite late for the i'm uh, gonna go look it's at 5 30 p.m my time on sunday and the dallas oh, okay. just like half nine dallas finals are at 2 p.m sunday so it's at, directly after dallas finals okay. so just stay tuned and watch the finals yeah. for this after 
Um, I'm not totally not planning the fact that I wore a Caitlin Clark shirt today to <laughs> talk about all this, but good vibes either way. Um, I think that's it for us this week. Uh, we will be back. N- is this hold? Hold on, we're gonna we're gonna do some live planning here. Uh, oh is God, always good. Yeah. Uh, is this our break, or do we have one more set before our break? I think we should probably cover the end of Dallas next week. You know what? We have Dallas, and then we have Blast Premier Spring Blast Final. Premier, yeah, and and Jinping, which I'll be working. So. Okay, so we will not take our normally scheduled summer break yet, but we will take it post Blast Spring, and we will yeah, come so back. Probably last one will be June twenty third. We June. Yeah, we will come back in July for an event. We have to make some editorial yeah. decisions about what it's, we're doing in July. It's a uh... Yeah, uh, esports World Cup is the first one. Esports World Cup and then Blast Premier Fall Finals. We yeah. yeah, um, we will be back for those two after our break in June. But for right now, we will be back next week and the week after that. So stay tuned, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'll see you all next week. You can find us on Twitter at Logan Rivehab at AZS and at Real TLDR. Read TLDR and learn CS.gg. and learn CS.gg. Bye, everyone.